Welcome to another edition, a Friday edition, a casual edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 329. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm George Conger. Today, September 29th, 2017. Okay, before we get too far down the road, quick shout out to Victoria, my daughter. September 29th, 1993 was her birthday. Um, She has just uh, reached and and went over to that year of age where she doesn't tell people how old she is anymore. Uh, For guys, it's probably a little older, but for uh, girls her age, when you hit this age, you don't tell anybody how old you are anymore. But happy birthday, Victoria, who doesn't watch the show. I better post something on her Facebook page. You know, that's the strange thing, George. Um, Back, you know, five, ten years ago, for millennials, Victoria's age, you know, people 25 and younger, 26 and younger, um, it was all the rage to be on Facebook. And so they got their parents to migrate there. They got their grandparents and great-grandparents. And Facebook has kind of been that place where we keep up with family and stuff like that. If you're a fan of Kevin, you keep up with the latest politics. Oh, I feel sorry for you people. Um, and it's just a general uh, front porch now where people go for information and, and to stay in touch and get the pictures of the grandkids. However, the millennials themselves kind of have abandoned that. Uh, Victoria, Michaela, Benjamin, my three kids, don't go on Facebook that much. They hang out on Instagram and other places, George. Um, you have two daughters. What, what's your experience? Exactly so, Kevin. Uh, my children uh, don't watch our show. Uh, well, yeah. They know Daddy does something behind a closed door, but they don't really want to ask huh? what. Huh? Um, they, have, they only are on Facebook to see if I post any embarrassing pictures of them. That... That Facebook is yesterday's news. It's yeah. the equivalent of ham radio. Uh, <laughs> Morse code. Doop, 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 doop. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, my grand, my grandfather had a ham radio set in his little study, and he, uh, I would watch him tap out Morse code and talking. Oh, people. really? And, then, huh. and the only time we hear about ham radio now is on in the Caribbean after the hurricane, when mm-hmm. the only thing working is the ham radio with a little hand crank generator. Well. That's the way the child, my children who are now in their early 20s view cable television. They don't watch cable TV. Um, they Everything is either Netflix or on-demand uh, product. They don't uh, go to Facebook. They don't look. They couldn't even tell you the name of the networks, NBC, CBS, ABC. Whereas we, in our generation growing up, Walter Cronkite and uh, Harry Wiesner and those fellows were fixtures. I don't even know who the anchors are of the evening news. Um, I remember you know, getting home from whatever activity I had in, ugh, I can't talk, whatever activity I had in high school, and Dad would be on the couch, and he'd be, we didn't have a real clicker back then. He had the, the one that uh, went from the cable box that was in his lap and had the little wire that ran to the cable thing, and he would watch the local news first, which are the people, um, the local people who couldn't really apply makeup evenly. There'd be little splotches on their head, and then he turned on the the big uh, Cronkites, the Dan Rather's. After that, and that's you know our upbringing until CNN came along, and then the TV was set there for most of the time. Yeah, and so we are trying to figure out. How do we connect, um, we as a congregation, Mm -hmm. we as a culture, how do we bridge these uh, shared experience gaps? My children, uh, I've I've shared this anecdote. Uh, I once noted uh, Paul Newman's face on a spaghetti jar, and I said, oh, he's on TV tonight and a movie, Cool Hand Luke. And my children did not know that Paul Newman was an actor. They thought he was a spaghetti entrepreneur his face is on these parts. That is their experience. We don't have shared culture anymore. We don't, and I can top that. My wife and I sat down and were like, oh, the next Blade Runner is coming out. we got to go see Blade Runner. And bo- oh, my kid's like, what do you mean the next? <sighs> Harrison Ford. They knew who Harrison Ford was. They watched Star Wars and Indiana Jones. But this whole Blade Runner thing is completely beyond them because it's that, that next step in a, a cultural separation that they just they don't have. And I'm like, boy, how did you guys miss Blade Runner? You missed a whole 
generation yeah, of great I'm movies. Scared because we might morph into Star Wars and Star Trek, and then we'll lose everybody yeah, watching. Right. So we need to get to the news. <laughs> we'll get to the news. That's right. That's right. All right, we're going to go with uh, news of an older institution, one of the oldest institutions in all the Episcopal Church, Neshota House. George I and I. That was built on. Yeah, okay, all right, same thing. The oldest institution in this church. Go on, go on. Last week or the week before, you and I announced that Michael Curry, uh, the bishop, presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church, was going to receive the Ramsey Award, which everybody knows uh, is for the Pharaoh God of Egypt, and we give that out to our presiding bishops. And That's you. Ramsey's, not Ramsey, but. Archbishop of Canterbury, the other is played by Yule Brenner. In the movie. Yeah, I got it. No, let's go. <laughs> okay, Ramsey. And you said, and I agree with you, it's not going to be a big deal. Kevin, you said, you remember when they had to bring Catherine Jefferts Shorey in so she could be at St. Mary's Chapel. And the big thing was, was she going to do a Eucharist or just talk? And if she was talking, was it a preaching talk because of her position as a cleric or was it a talk talk? And that was the big discussion. But she came, she went. It wasn't a big deal. Uh, everything kind of got a little nervous for a while. But once she left, whoo, we survived. And I'm watching Facebook here after uh, presiding Bishop Michael Curry went to Neshota House. And I'm not sure we're in survival mode anymore. Uh, there's a lot of upset ACNA people and even more upset tech people because... A lot of people thinking are just trying to drive a wedge and push the AC and out. Um, and we need to talk about it because we were wrong. This is a thing, George. Yes, and I would liken this to the NFL controversy, oh, right? Sure. The, and in the sense that the degree of anger of the fan base uh, between the NFL and the players and the fan base and the show to house and its, and its fan base of alumni and uh, conservatives it's just as deep now the difference is than to show uh, the NFL's quality has been going down the tube for years and you know it doesn't help to have a crappy product and uh, have uh, spoiled players whereas Neshota House is an excellent product it's one of the finest seminaries out there our diocese sends a great number of people to Neshota House and we're basically now reaching the point where we most most of the people seem to be educated locally for a year or two, then go to Neshota House for a year or longer to get that polish and the experience of priestly formation that you can't get at a, uh, a Presbyterian or a Baptist, whatever seminary, even with an Anglican tract. So Neshota House has got a niche product, but it's succeeding in alienating its base of donors, of alumni on both tech and ACNA. And Folks, it's not the school's fault. It's not the faculty. It's not the students. There is no dean. So that the board of trustees is in charge. And just because you climb to the top of the greasy pole doesn't make you the brightest bulb in the room. Well, now that's, that's an that's interest, interesting. That is an interesting point. If I can interrupt real quick, when the tech ACNA war started, uh, Robert uh, Monday was the dean. Then it was um, the guy who was the pre the uh, Bishop of, Ed Sam. Uh, yeah, Salmon. Um, then it was Steve uh, Pay. Now they have an interim there. Um, the leadership, Anderson. all these people have not survived the tech wars. I think they were victims of it. Yes, they were savaged by both sides. Hmm. And the faculty in the Shota House is uniformly excellent. Um, and there's some members of both uh, Angl the Ang ACNA and the Episcopal Church, and they work well together. And they do their job which is to form future priests. The problem we have is when people in positions of authority, not involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the school, use the school to, to score political points. Now, if you're going to give, a, if you're going to give the Ramses or Ramsey Award to, uh, if you're going to give the Ramses Award to Michael Curry, then you need to give the Osiris Award to Foley Beach the next weekend. You need to do things in job lots. You need to have some balance. You, and you cannot be so holier than thou and define orthodoxy as what you think. If you're in a position of leadership, you also need to be in a position of servanthood and humility. And we're seeing a tendency among leaders 
uh, to assume infallibility on papal levels. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I see that too. Uh, we got an open letter from uh, Bishop Eric Menis uh, discussing this very thing. Are you, are you trying to push the ESCNA out? What is the goal here of giving an award um, to Michael Curry? And uh, um, what do you Protection think the goal? Make sure that nobody breaks all your windows. The Shota House every so often has to pay protection to the presiding bishop of the National Church so that next time, oh, next time some crazy suffragan with them, let's say Catherine Roskin, for instance, let's take somebody sure. of a normal, even headed level temperament sarcastic yes. decides that we must punish this evil place for not believing exactly as I do they need the defenders in the house of bishops need to be able to point out all the good work Nishota House has done to support the Episcopal Church and then it backs down now on the ACNA site we have the ACNA equivalents of Catherine Roskams who say that you know the Antichrist is coming to Neshota House and we catch cooties from the fact that we have a degree that says Neshota House and the devil is there and all this and that. And Neshota House now has to placate actors and say, yes, we, we support your work. Um, I'm not, I didn't go to Neshota House. I've never been there. Um, I've never been to Wisconsin. What? Uh, oh, come on. I grew up there. So a cool never place. Been to, never been to the Midwest. Never oh. been to Chicago. I mean, I take it on trust those places exist. They I do. see it on maps. Mm -hmm. I read it on TV. Mm -hmm. I've never been there. Yeah. These people who are getting so bent up, out of shape on both sides, need to relax and realize what Neshota House's job is. It's to form priests. The battle is not should not be fought there. Yeah, it it, fought yeah, there. absolutely. It should, you know, I, I assure just, you we'll be talking about this in a week or two, too. Woody Anderson, the interim dean, is a man of integrity. Mm -hmm. he, is a, he is an excellent scholar, and he is a kind, wonderful human being. And those two often do not go together. I don't think he'll survive if those, he's got you know those wonderful attributes and a dean. Yeah. Well, he, if he's going to, well, if he wants to go into administration, he needs to learn how to be an SOB. Yeah, but, that's right. <laughs> Please do not impugn his integrity or character or think that he's pulling a fast one. He is the interim dean. All right, let's move on to our next news. Uh, now, you work hard during the week. You put in a good 70 hours as a priest. You are the, the, the senior managing editor at the uh, Anglican Inc. Uh, news website. I don't know if you always get a chance to catch up with the news. Did you see that uh, our good friend, Gavin Ashton is now the right reverend Gavin Ashton. Yes. This is wonderful news. Yeah. And I really cannot report on this because I have a personal relationship yeah. with Gavin. So Anglican Inc. really is restricted to this stage to putting out press releases and commentary pieces by third parties. I my commentary is that thank god this step has been taken and i'm going to say some harsh things but not about gavin okay. first off Go on. first off i've i met gavin at uh, the acna at the gafcon meeting in nairobi and even in nairobi gafcon was giving him short shrift gafcon uh, gafcon the international institution is in trouble uh it needs to model itself on the ACNA to succeed, and it has decided not to. Well, when you the say ACNA, that, what, what does the ACNA model look like? The ACNA model, really a charismatic, inspired leader of uh, Bob Duncan, who is able to bring together three hitherto antagonistic streams, the Charismatics, the Evangelicals, the Anglo-Catholics. Well, it was more than that. It was those three in 10 different groups. Yeah. yeah. Bring them all together into one tent and build a cohesive... Kevin, how long, when, would, when were we in Fort Worth when the ACNN, ACN became the ACNA? Or... Uh, 2008 was the uh, uh, time we are down in Plainville and uh, sat Plain. down there. And uh, I remember the tension before the meeting. 
I, you know, three hours before they were going to have their ceremony, uh, I, I saw people running around. Oh, AMIA, they don't want to be it. They're they're out. They're out. They're out. And you were just like, "What's going on? What's going on?" And the tension before, you know, all this was taking place was amazing. So much so that when I saw that they had their meeting in Vancouver, where they had the conclave over uh, holy orders, and they didn't split, I'm like, "This is the sign that Act would Bob, has passed the yeah. Gamaliel test." Yeah. Of, you know, if it is of God, it'll prosper. It's mm -hmm. been prospering. Why has it been prospering? Because it, it has adopted a Catholic universal position. Uh, GAFCON UK is a creature of GAFCON, the international organization, and it has created a partisan organization. And going back to 2008, the Anglo Catholics and the traditional uh, minded uh, Anglicans who were not conservative evangelicals were marginalized. And Gavin has been working faithfully ever since that point to bring to, how should I put this without upsetting people? There are egos involved in GAFCON and they're short sighted people and they have. Uh, but hold on, there's also good and faithful people with inside, you know, you, you can't lump them all. There are some people there, um, and we know them, they're all friends of ours, and, you know, some of this criticism may seem kind of harsh, but uh, we're the type of guys that we can talk out and open and have transparency. Um, some of the things that we see from afar, like the, the try to change the GAFCON name to the FCA, the Fellowship of uh, Confessing Anglicans, it, it didn't work, it was a flop. They spent a lot of money, a lot of time. They flew everybody into uh, London to have this great big uh, ceremony. It didn't work. Um, you know, Gafcon- The choice of Andy Lyons yeah, been a flop. It, currently. Yeah, Andy Lyons was consecrated, now he's disappeared. Hmm. Uh, you've got a brand new bishop to do all these great things, and the man has been absent. He's been in Africa, he's been on vacation, he's been elsewhere. I'm sure he's a lovely man. He doesn't do press. He doesn't attempt to do anything except further a special narrow section of interests. And GAFCON is not going to recreate an English ACNA if you solely go after one slice of a demographic. Gavin Ashenden uh, opens the door for full Catholic Anglican participation in the reform of the Anglican Church in the UK. Um, let me just say that uh, Gavin has, did not seek this office. He is an outside uh, uh, quantity as far as Gafcon would be concerned, but in a such... Gafcon's in, tr Gafcon's in trouble, Kevin. Look yeah. what's going to happen at the forthcoming primates meeting. So I, nobody agrees more that Gafcon is in trouble than I do. However, I still think they're the best bet in town. Um, but that the doesn't mean they should be exempt from criticism and oh, getting gosh. their right. You and I are allowed to criticize them. We're doing fine. Yeah, but, um, um, they, 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 go ahead. They have, they have squandered so much goodwill. They have squandered so much time. They can't even do an effective press communication team. It's, I didn't know they had one. They don't have one. Okay, all right. <laughs> Um, I mean, my local SPCA does a better <laughs> job with the press than GAFCON. No, but you're asking what's going to happen here at the uh, the upcoming primates meeting. You, I have no idea. I know that we have a bunch of new primates, a bunch of new conservative primates. Uh, we have primates that their only relationship with GAFCON is their relationship. It's not uh, a province level. Um, you know, a worst case scenario is they go in there and they get loved on by uh, Justin Welby. They buy into the, you know, we can all be one group with different ideas approach. And, you know, a lot could go wrong real quick. Then we had a uh, off the record press briefing at Lambeth Palace, Palace earlier this week where it was trotted out uh, that the uh, Scottish Episcopal Church is going to be chastised over endorsing gay marriage. Now, this is something that GAFCON at the time, last year, was really hot to trot on. And what the uh, ACC staff is doing is trying to neutralize this issue by saying, oh, 
the Scots are going to get their hands smacked. When we saw what happened with the Episcopal Church getting their hands smacked, there was no follow through by the office. So we're having little uh, preemptive strikes by the uh, Anglican deep state to control the primates so that what comes out of this is basically kicking the can down the field. So in essence, we redo the last 10 years all over again. Mm. That so by the time the 16 new primates have been lied to two or three times, they're ready to take definitive action. Uh, but by then their terms are office are over and we get some 16 to do guys and it starts all over again. I don't want to sound cynical, Kevin, but I just am not uh, optimistic about that. Oh, you're coming off yeah. as cynical and critical, but wise. You know? Hmm. Good attributes. Uh, we have really come up on our limit here. Uh, 22 minutes. God bless you people for watching all the way to the end. Uh, you know, George and I uh, critique the Episcopal Church, the ACNA. We critique the uh, GAFCON ourselves. And uh, kind of like our wives do. You know, there's nobody more honest with Kevin than my dear wife, Jill. Do you have that issue, George? No. S no Susan? Uh, <laughs> no, no. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm George Conger. And you've been watching episode 329 of Anglican.